Rock and roll. Do it. So tell me, tell me what you're what you're up to. You got you got a new adventure. I do have a new adventure, and it's the new adventure in teaching, an adventure that you have taken on numerous <laughs> of the occasions. <laughs> many, many, many quarters, many semesters. Yeah. There is one thing that I am noticing, you know, because I always kind of liken myself to more of a blue collar architect, yeah. you know, probably because of my blue collar upbringing, blue collar family and everything else. But it, it, contrary to the name of our podcast, the, the one thing that I don't really do is farewell with Arca Speak. I mean, it, it, it's almost like, what's the point of it? <laughs> That's exactly why we named it this. So you exactly. could have this turmoil and so that you could express it on this show. And, <laughs> and so one of the interesting things about it is the fact that here we are having this conversation. What is my, why is something beeping? <laughs> what, what, what was that? Something is beeping. Something um, needs you. We, this needless... What is what is a good word? This this needless desire to overcomplicate the process of architecture, the creation of architecture, the the it's the, hubris, dude. It's self importance. It's it, like it's we don't that that whole like that extremely seriousness. <laughs> I'm not using the words in the right tenses well, here. Well, maybe but, that's one of the reasons why we struggle so much with the the ratio of how many buildings are designed and built or designed by architects versus just kind of a design build or a contractor well, just, led or just a world supply of buildings. Or right? world, yeah. Exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we tend to create this air of self-importance and create this air of, we're kind um, of a big deal. I don't know if you know this. Unapproachability. <laughs> One of the things, so it was interesting is, so I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. I am an adjunct faculty member at Lawrence Technical University in the Detroit metro area. They've got really, really interesting programs all evolving around design, whether it's graphic design, product design, automotive design, automotive engineering, architecture, you name it. And and so it's it's going to be really interesting to to kind of like immerse myself into the world of academia because of my history of spending what the last 25 plus years in the world of practice. Mm -hmm. And even though I've done things like volunteer with ACE mentorship and things like that, and I kind of work with a lot of our junior staff mentoring them, it is significantly different when you are teaching the next generation of up and coming architects because it depends on the college. I would say, it, I guess it depends on the college. Yeah. Because there's, there, there is still that kind of like, you know, rooted in theory to, um, then the kind of like practice kind of things. And, and you know me, I'm going to be coming at it a little bit more on the practice side of things. I'm going to be coming at it, the more pragmatic kind of like Almost, almost in a way of like, oh, why are we doing this? This is unimportant to the real, the reality of architecture. Dude, <laughs> you just, you just wrapped yourself up in a bureaucracy. Uh, and I, I'm I, using that term loosely, <laughs> right? But like, it's a business. It, it, it is. And it, but it's interesting because so like here I am and I'm listening. And oh God, I'm going to get myself in trouble if. Yeah, you are. <laughs> but. Can somebody, okay. can somebody tell me what the, boy, I'm going to sound like an ass. You get to edit this. You, you, you can, you can, you can well, <laughs> divulge what is and the, then edit. How about that? Let's, what is, let's make this what is a the psychotherapy of, section. What is the importance of a PhD in architecture? Hmm. Letters after your name, credentials. I, you know, I'm going to get in trouble too. So if you're asking me that question, <laughs> I am asking you that question. <laughs> I, I don't think you need. I, and so again, like I'll get in trouble. I don't think you need anything else besides a bachelor's degree in architecture. But I mean, there are specialties that that do matter for sure. Well, okay. Um, so anyway, the, there's you know, there's specialties. I haven't thought deeply like, about this. You know, let, let's say, hey, I've got a PhD in, I don't know, 
building sustainability, sustainability, yeah, or building building products or, or building envelope or things like that. Things okay. that <laughs> practitioners gain experience on by doing over and over again. And whether it's through maybe an investment with the firm or an investment in yourself, you, you go and you pursue, whether it's through seminars or white papers or conferences or things like that, that you learn kind of a, you, you teach yourself how to become a specialist in some of these, these things that people are doing, but you do it in a way where you have the practical application of doing it on a project, doing it for a client, doing it in reality, where you are actually understand the ramifications. You need both. I, I, I think you, you, you need, need both. It. Well, yeah. I mean, so like, I don't, I don't want to dismiss or downgrade it. I'm, I, that literally, that was legitimately a real question is like, I don't know because I stopped at a bachelor's of architecture. Yeah. I easy for me to say, that's all I have. Right. Right. You know, so, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, I absolutely 100% am not discounting anybody who has all of the advanced degrees, including a PhD in advanced studies of architecture, because the one thing that you and I always talk about is this lack of research and development in architecture and that other people or people either leave the profession to do that and make money off of doing kind of that advanced research because architects are either uninterested or busy or whatever the excuse is to not do advanced research for, for the development of the practice of development mm -hmm. of, of what we do. So I'm, I'm legitimately asking, cause I, cause I, well, I, I mean, if, if I were to just go off the cuff, right? Like specialty, we've had this conversation with Michael Ehrman from Amber right. book and Virginia tech, right? We, we went to dinner with it, with Michael at the AIA conference. Mm -hmm. Michael's an amazing person. He's been on the Troxel podcast. He's been on this podcast. He, he's a smart dude. Yeah. And he is absolutely of the mind that specialties are where it's at. In, in architecture, I mean, and you, he, I'm sure he would apply it beyond architecture right. for the purpose of your career and career development and, and focus, right? Because I, I think I've always more fallen on the side of generalist oh, because I, architects I have to am. orchestrate the entire thing, right? Yeah. We have to deal yeah. with the contracts, the design, the, you know, the herding of the cats, right. the, the ceremonies of the uninvolved. We have to, <laughs> the, the multiple, the, the multi-headed clients, we right. have the stakeholder, you know, all the buzzwords and we have to do all that. But the specialists, like, like it's, it's so specific because architecture is nuanced, right? Like, like there's so many tech companies that come into art. Why can't you just make it like the the assembly line of the automotive industry and apply that to architecture. And it's like, yeah, it actually kind of, it just doesn't work. And many companies have failed trying to do something like that. And, and it's because it's so nuanced. And so if you do have a PhD in sustainability, number one, it's good for your career because it, you could get to a, a higher level faster. Right. I right. do believe within corporate America, corporate architecture firms, but also they market you as yeah part of an integral part of your staff that sets them apart from everybody else, right? So not everybody has that position. Not everybody has that uh, credentialed individual or individuals working on their teams. And I mean, we see that in a lot of well, larger firms, well, right? So what's, what's interesting about that, so we have those architects who have specialized in sustainability and the whole process of materials and construction waste, the whole, like everything that they need to know about, let's, I'm going to generalize the way that I explain this, the lead process or the sustainable process on a project, but they still in a way are somewhat generalist because they're, they approach every building very much the same way. And so there's the speciality or specialty and the generalist application of that specialty that they're able to kind of like go across the board. And I know that, that I, even when I'm saying it, it sounds a little weird, but, and it could be like way off, way wrong. But I mean, it's just, it seems when we say, when I think of specialist, maybe that is what I am actually thinking of because I've worked for firms that have specialized in chip like now just higher education buildings, but there's specific types within higher education that we have broken down 
in our you know higher education because that's all we do is higher education we have campus planning we have house student housing we have kind of more like stem type buildings and then cultural resource buildings and things like that so but whereas that is a speciality of the types of projects we go after it's still a very generalist approach to the overall thing because people bounce back and forth between projects and the project types and stuff. And so whether I may be working on a lab building today and I will be doing a, a cultural asset like storage facility or something like that on another <laughs> one. <laughs> I was thinking you sound like a, you're, you're like one of the Bourne movies talking about cultural assets. You're Jason Bourne. <laughs> well, I mean, we do, we, you know, we have a cultural arts studio that, actually does things like like we have a um, continuing contract with smithsonian with national parks and things like yeah. that and so that's where like, i don't the i don't think of specialties in market segments although that definitely exists like right. health so that, planner and that's is, why I was very, saying, is, I, is specific right I, I think more on i actually think more on the technology side De design technologists bim managers right like there's computational designers right, right. there's definitely been a boom in that area um that, and, and even to the point now where where we're not even hiring architects in firms to fill roles like data analysts and and right. doing developers people are doing software development things like yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. very specific right mm -hmm. and i think what's interesting I, I that has never interested me like i'm interested in design i'm interested right. in projects yes across the board yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. i like variety Yes. And then there's other people who want to really like niche down and do this very specific stuff. Like, I mean, to Michael, back to Michael Ehrman, right? Architectural acoustics. That's his thing. Right. That's where he got his foothold in the industry. And because he was so specific in that, he was the go-to guy. Right. And right. he got to get on the phone and talk to Raphael Vignoli about a theater project, right? Because no one else knew yeah. the words to say. Right. And so, yeah, I, exactly. it's, it's interesting to think about like, like my, my role trended toward technology and I built a network around technologists. Right. And that opened doors. And I think that's harder maybe to do as a generalist. I mean, yes. and, and so yeah. that's why people trend toward a role in architecture that is like design or technical or specifications or, you know, D actually doing code research or things like that because like right. you become so valuable in that thing that you do that you become kind of a linchpin in your firm and they can't live without you right and so that's why people trend towards these kind of I, really more specific roles yeah so like as i said i was getting the whole usage of specialist clearly wrong and that that's fine <laughs> I'm, i'll admit it i was wrong with it you well know. no like to back to your point like there are People who do healthcare architecture, period, right? And right. so, like that—that that is a thing for sure. I mean, yeah. but but at the same time, like I don't see it that way. A building is yeah. a building. I, I, I'll figure yeah, out totally, how to program totally. a building. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's funny as I was having a conversation with somebody and referring to myself as a specialist. It's like, you give me a building, I will. If I've never done, I'll figure it out. If I yeah, yeah, if I've never done it before, I will find the people who will help me in the planning process. The things that that will achieve it but a building i can do a building you put a can, building together yeah. right yeah, yeah. And, and anyway <laughs> why did you ask this question in the beginning where, where were you going with this about the specialists and the phds and the and you, well is, no, it, is that be, an academia kind of a thing because we were having so you know I, I was uh involved with my first kind of like you know faculty uh meetings um mm -hmm. the other day and people were introducing them. They went around the room. Everybody kind of introduced themselves and stuff like that. And some people were saying, you know, licensed practicing architect. Other people were sitting here saying, I'm this, I'm that, you know. And then a few people were just like, I'm, I'll be teaching this and I've got a PhD in this and this and this. And, and honestly, because it was never really an offering where I went to school or really, to be quite honest with you, it literally sort of, I almost consider sometimes the like i was perfectly suited to go to the school that i went to because of my own mentality on the way that i approach architecture and sort of the way that a lot of the people who taught and teach at 
at Auburn are very much like that. You know, the whole mentality behind the rural studio is this kind of like roll up your sleeves and do whatever the hell it is that you need to do yeah. to, so to do architect. this. And it's yeah. like you, you become the Swiss army knife of the project. You Whatever tool you need, that you're there kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, I honestly was legitimately asking is like I don't – because of everything that I do in architecture – Every like role, every hat that I've worn, everything that I've done, I've been able to do it under the the limited role of just having a bachelor's degree in architecture. Well, you're it, not pursuing becoming an academic, and right, that's right. I mean, the people that you're talking to are, like, right, and that right. is what won them that role. I mean, yeah. among other things, right? And, and again, and, you know, the, where the question was coming from is like, you know, what do you, what does one do with a PhD? in architecture because it's clearly yeah. not necessarily practice because if it's just practice in the way that I'm talking about practicing, w- w- what's the point? W- what's the point of having one? So, you know, it was le- legitimately just a question of curiosity of just, Hey, I kind of like hemmed and hawed about, like, Oh, I can, I'm going to get myself in trouble because I wasn't sure how to phrase it without sounding offensive. It's like, you know, yeah, what's the point of it? But I wasn't necessarily demeaning it i was just curious what the hell do you do with it well the beauty of this is you don't just get to ask me we get to the audience can give us feedback yeah yeah. (laughs) and 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 provide that i mean my my general sense is number one like it it solidifies your position as a specialist Mm -hmm. in said area okay which becomes not only like a like a backstop of expertise within the firm or in academia but also as a marketing promotional outward uh, statement to say like, we care about this stuff so much that we've hired the experts who pursued that through academia, right? To achieve that. And then they're working on your project. And that could be a differentiator, right? When it comes to winning work because we do compete for work. I mean, we use subject matter experts all the time for very specific roles within the project. And that's the, that's the, you know, I'm starting to, as we talk about it, answer that question. It's like, work it out. Those yeah, are, sure. those are the specialists. Those are the people who do have the PhDs or the advanced studies or the advanced research in that specific thing. So, you know, if we're talking about like a Michael Lerman and we're saying that we have, cause we use um, acousticians all the time and, and they are very specific about what it is that our understanding of what it is that sound does to a building and the material choices and the way that you lay it out and all of that other stuff. And then, then that then helps us as the designer and the technical architects. You know, achieve take, the goals. Yeah, that, take, yeah, yeah exactly. For the take, space. That, take that data and right. achieve the goals. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so, so you're, you're a new adjunct faculty member. I'm a new. And, and can, tar- yeah. You're, new, you're launching into a new adventure. Exactly. So, okay. So now that we've gotten that, your, your question about like what, why these specialties matter, talk about what you're actually going to be doing. I will be teaching a, what's called a ID five, which is integrated design studio level five, which is a senior level course that basically builds upon all of the other integrated design courses that they take throughout the year, which builds on things like concept planning and urban studies and all the different things that they are learning about sustainability and everything. It kind of, they always can constantly build onto that until they get to their final projects in what's called comp design which is a comprehensive design, which takes all of the knowledge that they built over the course of the five years and then does a big project for to, to basically illustrate that they've learned all of this stuff throughout the course of the however many years they've been there. And so that is that would you would you would you equate that to a thesis project like we that's what we had? We call yeah, that. yeah, I would. I would. Yeah. Um, and so what this particular course we'll be focusing on, and it's still a work in progress. I'm actually going to be teaching with a friend of the show, with a friend of ours that has constantly failed to produce coffee for you. <laughs> <laughs> still nameless. So he still doesn't get still a name. Nameless. Still nameless. Um, yep. Hasn't earned it. Exactly. You know, has not <laughs> earned the right to be, to have his name used until Evan gets his coffee. But, but it's true. 
<laughs> it's absolutely true. Yeah. But, you know, the shame. He's the shame. He's been teaching for a while and now he is full-time staff and and so he he's kind of leading the studio effort and we're there's three studio instructors, him, another guy and myself. And we're going to be working on an urban project, an urban infill project in the city of Flint. The, they'll have like an actual client that they'll be able to meet with, which is a, um, a client that, you know, uh, ah, almost said his name. Whew. Whew. Had to back up there. Whoa. Almost Good sound effect. Name. You yeah. almost said the name. <laughs> almost said his name. <laughs> we, you could have bleeped it out. It yes. would have been okay. Um has kind of put together, which is a really interesting. And I will definitely talk more about it. Like once the actual assignment is pulled together, we uh, were in fact, just before recording, we're having a meeting with studio and lab instructors to kind of like coordinate everything that's going to be taught in at least the first half of the semester and make sure that there's quantifiable like correlations between what's being taught in lab and what's being taught in studio. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to because basically... What's the what, difference between a lab and a studio? Yeah, or you mean lecture and studio? It, it, well, I mean, so where where we would typically have in our, in my studios, we would have lecture and studio all kind of the combined. So sometimes mm. you, would do, you would be doing lecture, sometimes you would be doing like actual studio work and things like that. This is sort of separate so that like the, there is a certain requirement of things that they would be doing in a lecture type format. They're doing that in what they call a lab and then everything else that they will be doing. Um, <laughs> that's, that's so confusing to me. <laughs> it, I, I, let, let me learn terminology. It. Yeah. Let me learn it first and I'll have yeah. a better, I mean, dude, this is literally you're, like, you're, what you're is this, like not even day, a day one yet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I, I just, I just went yesterday to pick up my faculty ID Nice. That's about how far into the adventure I am. Now you can get discounted software, and what else? I don't well, know. They keep a- nothing. they keep asking me. They're like, <laughs> "Had you go- have you gone and got your faculty computer yet?" And I'm like, "No." And they're like, "Well, you know, it's got all the different software and stuff." And I was like, "Well, what software?" And they're like, "Well, it's got this, 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 and this." And I'm like, "Well, I've got Revit 2020." to 2024 yeah, you can't use the you can't use yeah. the company machine for that kind of stuff. I'll just well, tell you yeah. right now <laughs> your, but my your machine, it department would not be happy but honestly my machine's better <laughs> just so of course you know. it is of course it yeah. is i i never ever got a school machine never once it was it yeah. was just assumed it was bring your own device <laughs> so well <laughs> at least you get they, the option <laughs> well they do and actually you know they they are i mean they're they're just a lenovo thinkpad and who uses those i mean a lot of people yeah. w- why why <laughs> what <laughs> that's a good brand what are you talking about uh, yeah whatever you know i mean it was it was so undesirable that ibm sold them <laughs> <laughs> uh, take oh, that! Oh no, I, I think that's one of the quality, <laughs> one of the more quality brands out there still. It probably, oh, that's it, funny. it probably is actually. It probably is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they still have that cute little red dot mouse do. thumb thing in there. Yeah, they do. In addition to the trackpad, I remember when like the first ThinkPads came out with that, and it was like, well, which is, I mean, so here's like a little pencil eraser in the middle of the keyboard. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, do I like, or, or it's like, you know, Ooh, my fingers, my finger itches and you just like rub it up against the, (laughs) yeah, it's a very rough, rough little scratching post in the middle of your keyboard. You know, it's, it's (laughs) what's interesting about, so everybody like, I, I didn't have time to go and get my computer yesterday. So I I didn't, and I still have an opportunity to go and get my computer later. But at the time, I didn't have, there was just too many things going on. Plus, while I was there, I was also trying to work and answering a lot of questions and all this other stuff. So we were sitting in a architectural factor, fact, factory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in the factory, right. but but yes. while I was at the factory, I was also in a faculty meeting. Get, uh-huh. I'll get that word right. Um, mm-hmm. And everybody was like doing their little work and all that other stuff. And here I am, and I'm like, 
people are sending me images and they were like, Hey, can you mark this up and let me know what else I need to change and stuff. And here I am with my little stylus and I'm like drawing on the computer and I'm like changing I'll things. I'll remind you, sending you did stuff. not like this computer when you first got it. You I did totally, not appreciate it. Totally. And, and, I've, <laughs> already, and you've, I've already, you've got, you've done a U-turn here. You've, I have to, I, <laughs> you've done I a have, 180. I totally love and appreciate this computer now. I, I still don't understand how a Windows machine does not work well with Windows software. That I don't understand. Let me explain. Are you talking about like Teams or what are you talking about? So on Teams, if teams I'm... Teams is a piece of junk. Teams is, say that. teams is garbage, but yet for some reason, everybody loves to use Teams. And so clients are using Teams. I like and mediocre else. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yes, that, that's the thing. And so they're like, hey, Cormac, can you share your screen? And I'm like, let me preface this by saying that I can share my screen. You will see the first image I put up. But I can, when I advance, it doesn't advance for you. <laughs> it advances for me, and I can see things moving. Everything's but, fine on my end. But, yeah. <laughs> but on yours, it doesn't. Nothing moves. Nothing changes. Jeez. And I've had, like... I have to do these presentations where I start and stop sharing each time. I'm going to the oh. next slide. I'm going to stop. I'm going to reshare my screen so you can see the next slide. What a m and and they've literally given me three, three machines, two Z books, and this. And for some, I don't know if it's something that is. It's you, operator error. It, it, it <laughs> well, here's the here's the interesting thing. There is a very very well known glitch between Microsoft computers and Microsoft hardware. Specifically I was going to say, there's a very known glitch between Cormac Phelan and his computer. <laughs> there is that too. There is that too. I, yes. I use computers. Well, let, let's just put it this way. I just care, put that on your resume. I, I care, use computers. <laughs> I care so little about actually learning how to use this that I just use enough to actually get me by throughout the day. It is a just, it's a digital notepad for me. It is a digital sketch pad for me. It is a digital talking machine like, you know, we're doing right now. But other than that, I don't really care. Uh, you know, it's an like, appliance. Yeah. It's an appliance. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's just an appliance. So how many students are you going to have? Um, so between the three instructors, and we kind of like rotate during like doing desk crits and things like that, but there are 40 students in the ID5 studio. So kind of, okay, so what do you mean by rotate? Are you going to so, be teaching all of them or doing the desk crits for all 40 at the same time? No, or no, do you no, split not at the same time. So we'll, we'll divide that by three. One, one professor will have like a group of students and then the other two will have equal split between that i get to i get to pull a cormac phelan now i get to say isn't that cute isn't it, that just cute what it, you just said D dividing 40 by three and that's all you need to worry about when you're teaching that's right <laughs> i think the last time i talked about some budget on a project you're like oh that's a cute budget <laughs> 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 so i've had courses anywhere from 20 to 120 <gasps> and let me tell you the 120 that's not fun when it comes to grading season. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that. Oh my no, goodness! I get it. I mean, you know, like I've I'm married to an actual teacher. Yeah. And, <laughs> and trust me. But you just did it. You just did it. Isn't that cute? I'm married to an actual teacher. Oh, that sounded so horrible. <laughs> You know, college is fine, but I'm so, married to it. So what you mean by teacher. that is teachers who come home and cry at night. Because <laughs> that's what real teachers do. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like architecture. <laughs> let me, let me, let me expand on that. Cry while drinking. <laughs> cry this is why self, mommy drinks. Yeah. Cry while self-medicating, while self-numbing. <laughs> You know, totally. I, it's just like the reason we're laughing because it's all we can do to cope. <laughs> the, re the reason why they can go back the next day um, with a smile on their face 
It's because they forget. Because <laughs> they've drank themselves into forgetting the day before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell wow. you. What. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. yeah. And I don't necessarily think, it, it was interesting, it's like the conversations they were having, it's just like, you're going to have these students who they don't want to do the work or they're just going to be kind of like a wallflower and all this other stuff. And they're just like, you're just going to have to learn to kind of deal with them and all of this other stuff. I'm like, deal with them. Here's the conversation you have with them. Listen, when you're in practice, when you're actually doing this for real and you're getting a paycheck and you think that you can not do the work or earning, earning. It's like, it's like having a, a, a conversation with you, a kid, yeah, right? It's you like, won't have a job for long. Right. Like we can't just like, oh, well, can I have a little bit of extra time? It's just like clients don't, you know, when we issue a, you know, a schedule or we're working with say a construction manager who is obligated to have a schedule. And I had this conversation with our construction manager and our client today, and we were talking about the schedule and impacts and delays in some of the modifications of designs that we're doing for, for this, uh, this lab building. And I've talked about it, about this transition from the generic labs to a, these specific labs in we were talking specifically about, so it's like, well, like if, if we don't get these design changes by X date, it's going to have impact the overall construction and delivery and opening and turnover of the building and everything else. Huge financial and logistic implications, huge. And, and of course we're talking about, well, we need this information, that information and all this other stuff to make these decisions, have everybody stick to them. And so we can move on, whatever that part is. Don't, don't, that's not really the point of this. It's like the, it's all of the implications of the finances of it. The, and so when you say, oh, well, I can't really turn it in right now, or I haven't been working on it. Can I get a couple more weeks and all this other stuff in couple of weeks turns into couples of millions of dollars or more than that, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that's huge. And that that's the conversation that you have with them about like, the reason why we're asking you to do this work is we're training you to understand and how to deal with the challenges within the profession of being able to stay on task, being able to deliver when you're, when you've promised this. And because when you say, here is my delivery schedule for my deliverables, and then the contractor builds off of that and they build theirs and then financing goes through and they built it off of the construction schedule and it slips who's the the client is going to say who's going to pay for all of this overage that I now have to incur because of delays in the schedule yeah that's what you have it's like it's a lot and this is me being naive not being in the classroom yet and all of this other stuff but you know <laughs> I, you, you know like yeah when it, when we're talking about well I really need this extra time it's just like tell the contractor tell the client I'll tell you, like, with the courses that I taught, the grad students were way more on top of things than the undergrads. Yeah. Way more. Way more invested in their own education. <laughs> and, 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 okay, so I taught, the, my, the bulk of my teaching was 2000 to 2010. So it's been a while. And then I taught a few courses at the, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019 time. Okay. And that was to a, a wide range of students. But there were a lot of grad students in there as well but the grad students were because they already had been they already have an undergrad <laughs> right so they already understand the workload and they're balancing maybe a family life and they're balancing a job right you know and right. and like you have to be on top of things you yeah. have to be on top of scheduling and when you're going to get things done and what all the deadlines are and who needs what by when right it's just a different level of maturity Right. I think that's really right. what you're talking about here, right? It's like yeah, this level yeah. of potential immaturity. You, you don't know yet, yeah. but yeah. Um, I mean, being engaging, I think, is the first part of winning that battle, yeah. right? Because yeah. if you have an engaging course that isn't like out of control with the workload, mm -hmm. I think you're going to get great... You know, you, like people are going to want to show up and they're going to want to do the things that you're asking them to do. I think there was a lot of courses that I took. I mean, we, we had a conversation about this recently, right? Like architectural history 
interesting subject boring monotone delivery equals yeah. evan sleeping in class like exactly. that's what that yeah. yeah that's what that was right and right. um i like that's the class i learned how to sleep in class in right and and that's not like i'm not saying that's something that is a a badge of honor right it's unfortunate but it be, but the engagement is what i'm focusing in on here there was a complete lack of engagement and right. The, the teachers that I wanted to engage with, like they had 100% of my attention and 100% of my commitment to deliver. And usually that was design studio. Like that's how architecture school kind of is, right? right? right. But also you're, you're teaching design studio. Like you don't have yeah. to compete with design studio. You are design right. studio. So exactly. I think, I think you know, you, maybe, maybe there is a difference in students today, but I think, uh, you know, the odds are stacked in your favor at least in like it's the core class that these students are showing up for. The one thing that I found is very successful in just working and mentoring younger staff and stuff is teaching them the point behind what it is that we're asking them to do and what it builds on and what it supports in the progression of a project, the progression of your, of your career, all of these things that what we may find as simple or boring or pointless tasks, what they really are intended for, mm -hmm. what it really supports. And a lot of times you get more buy-in on people who realize, oh, you know what? I get it. That's, that's why I have to do these details or something, or this is why I have to do like this research <laughs> on what. Yeah. Yeah. The contribution, right, right. To the, to the overall goal and because, looking at it from a big picture perspective rather than just yeah. like the, the monotony of the potential, the potential monotony of the task that's been assigned. You know, cause if you're talking about like, Hey, I want them to do some work, but it's going to be like more busy work and all of this other stuff. If there is no contribution to, like, say, the end goal of a project or, you know, the end goal of your career or whatever, you got to ask yourself, what's the point of actually doing it, sure. you know? And and it may sound like it's being lazy on something, but I look at it this way. It's more streamlining. It's just like, is this going to benefit, is all of this busy work going to benefit the the project? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. And then it's like that whole little diagram. It's just like troubleshooting something. It's like, have you, I'm sure you've seen those things, like the little diagram. It's just like, yes, then keep doing it. No. Oh, like then, it, like you know, the flow chart. Yeah. Like yeah. the little flow chart right. of like, yeah. of like an engineer's flow chart or something. It's just like, right. will this work on the project? <laughs> yes, or, yes no. or no. Yeah. You, yeah. You know? <laughs> and then, and then it right. gives you the next steps of it's like, good job. You've cut all of this out of like your process and it's made life easier on you. And it's just like, we, I sit and I listen to all these different conversations, both now academically, as well as in the profession. And I listen to people, what people feel like are the complexities or the pain points in the profession. And I think to myself, well, what, then, then why are you doing it? Like, just cut that out because like, clearly that's not needed in the process of what it, whatever it is that you're doing. So just don't do it. Like it's the, you know, <laughs> for you to say, I don't know if that's true. Like, like you can't just apply that filter to it because obviously there's a lot of things we have to do because it's the way somebody requires it or, you know, the way well, we've always done it. We've heard that before, but there's a lot of, there is a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in the system that just hasn't worked its way out yet. Right? Yeah. Well, you should, it would be really interesting if I could like invite you, like blind CC you on some of my meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and just see how I conduct meetings differently than like I was taught how to conduct meetings because I do try to cut a lot of that crap out. I'm nice. like, there is no point in me sitting here talking about the, the process of how it got to where I am. I'm going to tell you that there was a process. I got to where I am. The reason why I got to where I am is because of X, Y, and Z. And that was the, that was the actual driving factors of why the design now looks like it is because mm -hmm. I'm preparing a, I'm preparing a presentation for a user group for tomorrow. And they're going to see a significantly different floor plan from what was presented in the last meeting. Mm. There is a whole lot of implications of, of why it's changed. And so that's where I'm spending my time is explaining to them what were the ramifications of what made it, what made me change it, explain to them so that they understand like the rationales of why I chose to change it because of 
impacts in schedule, impacts in constructability, like all of these other things, some, some unnecessary things that we would have to do to make things work that doesn't really benefit the overall space, their use of it and all of that other stuff. So I basically chose to streamline things and here is the result. And like, I think one of the interesting things about one of our clients that they kind of appreciate my like no nonsense approach to like, there is no reason for us to sit and kind of like just jabber on about like the, the touchy feely things of, of all of this, like at the point where I am right now in like construction, I will talk about the emotional attachment to design and all of that other stuff when it's appropriate, when we're talking about design. But when I'm talking about like trying to get something constructed that or reconstructed because it was already built, now we're building it again. There is no point in wasting time talking about like the, the nuances of the design. Let's just talk about, here's the result. Do you like it? Yes or no? Yes. Flow chart. <laughs> this, this is the kind of thing that I think you should start your course, your classes out with. It's like story time with Cormac. Here's what's happened this week. And the realities of a practicing architect, which yeah. I think a lot of their faculty cannot provide. I mean, and I'm not yeah. specifically talking about Lawrence Tech, but I'm, you know, yeah. architectural faculty in general. A lot of, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback over the years yeah. saying, thanks for telling us what it's really like to work in the profession of architecture because our professors don't know. Right. Right. And, and this kind of thing that you could potentially say, I guess, would, would, I think it would be really valuable. Right. It'd be, it'd be like, oh, that's what it's really like. I had no idea. Yeah. That's what it's really like. Well, you know, one of the things is that you've heard me say this and everybody's probably heard me say this through the course of like our recording this is one of my favorite things is to take new graduates and new hires out on site because when I'm going to ask them to do stuff, I want them to see what it actually means to, to do that. Like I'm telling you to draw this, you know, bathroom plan. Let's walk around the bathroom plan. The reason why I'm kind of like neurotic about maybe the way that this is laying out is because this is an ad adaptive reuse or a renovation project. And there are some ramifications, there are con some constraints that you have to work around. I want you to understand that. Like, mm -hmm. so like things actually have a point to it. it. Things make sense for a reason. And these are the reasons. And so when I ask you to do this or I assign you to do this or like whatever, your understanding that like it's it's not just a line on a paper. It's not just a some component in the model. It really actually means something and this is what it means and this is the why. I mean, if you're not doing anything and not and you don't understand the why, you gotta kinda ask yourself why you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> Right. Yeah. I was gonna say, like the whole time you were saying that, why, why, why? It's important to understand why for yeah. sure. Exactly. Well, I mean, if, if then you can ask, why am I doing this? And then, you know, you can have the conversation about, oh, well, you're doing, you, why you're doing this is because of this, 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 and this, or, or it'll impact this, or we're doing the, such this rigor of this design and these alignments and everything else. Thinking about this Archimarathon reel that they just posted about a building, a Renzo building that they had, had visited. And they were like following these lines around and all of the rigor of things. And it's just like, oh my gosh, look at the edge of the, tr the pattern in the tread and how it aligns with the handrail and how it aligns with the, the mullions of the window and all of this other We're stuff. We're architects. But we align are, things. Yeah. But, but those are the whys. <laughs> Just like when, when, some, when I assign somebody to do something and they want to know why, those are the things that I want to talk about, like how those whys support the other things that we're trying to achieve. And if you just get take the assignment and you don't ask why, then you're kind of missing the point of like how you can grow and learn and how you can do really enriching designs and all of this other stuff. And so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I know. mean, it reminds me of little kids, right? Why? Yeah. Why? And then you say the answer. And then why? And then you say the answer. And then why? And it, and it like it, it's I, the five whys. It's it's how many? How deep can you go? I swear. And we do I, lose that. Like that yeah. gets kind of pulled 
out of you, well, done, I've, numbed. I don't know, like what's the right I, word. But... I've I've talked to you about a friend of mine and a, a coworker, and she she's just like, hey, Cormac, you're probably going to get tired of me asking all of these questions about all this other stuff, but I just really need to understand what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, and all that other stuff. And so, if you ever get you know frustrated with me asking all these questions, just let me know. I'm like, I'm not going to get frustrated with you asking questions because. That's what I want. That's what I've always wanted. Remember, I, I said I like pin up a question mark on my desk. And it's like question everything. Question, ask why all the time. Like, And if you, th- that's what this conversation that I've been talking about, like the idea and the execution. And to, you know, to successfully like link those two together, it's always that question, that, 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 that inquiry, that, that questioning. Like, have I successfully implemented all of these designs so the diagram is read in the final production and when we were talking about the i i called it in the last episode i called the slide house it's the sliding house and i knew that i just kept saying slide house for some reason from from brian mckay lyons and he was in you you had said well, you, know, you can really see the diagram, like the diagram, the the idea, the concept, the diagram reads in the final, final production, and that's kind of what the questions support is. You you are questioning in your concept, like all of these different ideas, all of these notions, through design development. You should be questioning why and how you're supporting that initial concept through construction documents. You're questioning how you're supporting the design development and the concept. And it's just like this constant, like keep going back and zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out to make sure that you're like following through, following true to like the original concept. And that's what gets the capital A architecture, right? Yeah. I I think one of the things that it encourages is deep thinking. And I don't yeah. think there's enough of that in today's yeah. world, which is like, just do what I told you. Or, you right. know, we're, we have we have a deadline, just get it done. And yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. what asking why encourages is actual reflection. Yes. And and it it forces you, if you take it seriously, to think critically and say, yeah, why do we do this? Right. It's not right. it's not even important for you to come back with an answer. Maybe you right. have it, maybe you don't. Mm-hmm. But but it encourages you to say, you know, like slow down so that we can actually assess the situation and then move forward together. I think that that is doesn't happen enough. And and right. we are, there's there's this weird encouragement to just go fast, go fast, yes. yeah. take shortcuts. The incentives are, and we all know the this, budget, right? Like the this, schedule, the time. We don't have yep. time to question why. Just do, right? <laughs> yeah, but like, but what... really great projects and really great things that change mm-hmm. the world or change the outcome of the project or the clients or the mm-hmm. organization or whatever. You have to think deeply about, and and you can't just take shortcuts all the time. Like right. I, I, right. so, yeah. I mean, it's it's important. And I, I, if there's one thing, I guess, that we could take away from this conversation is like, yeah, spend the time to do that more often. I mean, you can't, yeah. obvi- you can't do it all the time, but <laughs> notice the moments when it really matters and, and actually do it. Because if you don't, if you're just regurgitating, right. the progress is not made. I don't, and I'm going to say this is somebody who is a habitual overworker. <laughs> that I, I think even with the tight budgets and the tight schedules, there is still time to reflect while you're doing it. Sometimes it requires sacrifice of your time to do that. But if it's something that you feel is worth it, you're going to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. in, and if you don't, then you're going to, get what you get. And a lot of times people are okay with just getting what they get. It's just, yeah. I mean, I was telling my plan is if, if no one else is going to, I will show in like the early stages of, um, the studio, I will sit down with everybody and I will pull out my laptop and I'm going to pull up YouTube and I am going to, um, show because even though I do have it on DVD, 
good luck finding something to play it because I don't even have a computer that, <laughs> you know, plays a DVD. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Eames is uh, Powers of Ten. I honestly have, the day that I got into architecture school, the very first day, after we had our convocation and we talked about, like, you know, welcome to architecture school and this is the challenges you're going to face and all of this other stuff. Now, here are your studio professors and go meet with them. And it's just like, and then we got together with all of the first year students and we we're sitting here huddled inside um, our studio and there's like everybody, all the professors are there together and all of the students are there together. Very first thing they showed before they ever started working or talking about anything that we were going to be doing, they showed powers of 10. And there was a point behind it. And I think we've, we've been talking about that point tonight, but, or now, but we've, I think a lot of people lose the point behind all of that, that zooming in, zooming out, looking at how everything is interconnected, looking at the adjacencies, looking at it from so many different perspectives that you're always questioning the why you're always questioning mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. and stuff and that isn't i've asked on numerous occasions anybody that i've like i've even gone back to auburn they don't show it anymore i've gone back to i've done all of these different like crits at different schools and stuff they don't show it and it's just like there's some there's something about the 10 minutes that it takes to actually look at that video and really understand what it is that charles and ray were talking about when they did it and what kind of like the whole intent of it, that it's literally something that I've carried through my entire career. I hope that they can get as much out of it as you did. I won't count on it, but. I, and maybe the other people that were sitting with me in, in studio didn't get, wasn't impacted the same way I was with it. It was always these, like, always look at it from the big picture, the small picture, the, the intermediate picture. Like, the thing that I learned about when we were doing hand drawings, right? You know, back in the old day, back in the day when we were doing hand drawings and stuff like that, is that you could literally stand up from your desk, take a few steps back, stare at it and say, all right, what am I not seeing? What else do I need to look at? Now Zoom you just out. move the scroll wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and now you scroll in, scroll out and all this other stuff. But then you're like, but I don't, I don't, maybe... Maybe I, maybe I should disagree with myself on this one. Is that I don't see that it's the same thing, and and really to be quite honest with you, you could see more with just scrolling in and out. I mean, like hell, I've got like on one of my other screens, I've got Navisworks open, which is like the entire development that this one university in Riyadh is that we're doing is, and it's got the whole entire development. So when you scroll out, you literally see it as a spec within the overall development. And then when you scroll back in, you know, you start to see it and all this other stuff. And, and that's kind of the point is like, does it blend in well with the, the overall intent of the design language of this particular development and stuff like that? So micro, macro, micro, macro, micro, yeah. macro. Yep. Cool, man. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the stories and yeah. your experience yeah. doing this and we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> it's one of those that I'm very optimistic and very hopeful that it is everything that I thought it would be. That's the beginning of the school year right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then at the end of the school year, it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> and granted, I was dealing with a bunch of high schoolers. And You and, know, you live with a teacher. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. A real teacher. <laughs> a real teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some crap for that. I'm sure. <laughs> cool, man. Anyway. Well, exciting. All right. Yeah. Until next time. Exactly. <laughs>